Hey there, kiddos. It is time for lesson eight. And uh, this is in the problem set. We are continuing to uh, learn about the objective of generating a number pattern from a given rule and plot the points, make a line, make sense of this table of values. So this is a table of values right here. And we're going to have three values in this table. And we have four pages in this activity, so we're going to jump right in. Um, table of three values for x and y. Okay, the, always the coordinate pairs are x and y. And here is how you're going to set it up. Such that each y is three more than the corresponding x. Okay, whatever x is, y is going to be three more than that mystery number plus 3 equals y. x plus 3 equals y. Now you say, but I don't know what x is. Well, that's okay. You get to make up x. So let's say x is 1. If I put a 1 here, 1 plus 3 equals 4. So what happens is, as soon as you understand what the rule is for uh, a certain table of values, Every pair of numbers is going to follow that rule, and then it, it's going to be a point on the line. If you do the wrong math, your point will be somewhere off the line, and then you know that you made a mathematical error. So let's say um, x is 5. Okay, 5 plus 3 equals y. 8. 5 plus 3 equals 8. Okay, now I also want to keep in mind what am I counting by on this number line? Because I would like to keep my three points on this graph or on this plane. So I don't want to have my final answer be higher than 12. So the highest I could have would be 9 because 9 plus 3 is 12. And that's the edge of my coordinate plane. Now, when you see this big space over here, they're telling you, hey, take your coordinate pair and put them into proper format. So you don't change anything. You don't add anything. You don't do anything different. Just rewrite them all pretty with the parenthesis, the number, the x value, the comma, the y value, and the end parenthesis. Okay? Now we're going to plot each point on the co coordinate plane. And so we're going to do this and I usually just say the two numbers in sequence while doing the X and the Y graph okay knowing that each line is a full count of one it's all whole numbers here okay so it's going to be one four one four point five eight five eight nine twelve nine and twelve we know it's right there at the top and what you should see are three points in a line. Okay, we plotted our points. Now use a straight edge to connect the points. Draw a line. We're making lines. And so if it says line segment, then you can stop it at endpoints. This is a line connecting these three points. Done. Now give the coordinates of two other points that would fall on this line. Now, what does that mean? It means follow the rule. Okay, if they're going to be on this line, then it's going to be your mystery number plus three equals the y. Okay, you make it up. You make up the number. Now, follow the directions here because it has to be greater than 12 for the x coordinate. So this has to be greater than 12. Then you're going to add 3 to get the y for these two pairs. So let's just start with something greater than 12, like say 15. If you have 15 for your x, you add 3 and you get 18. Easy peasy. What if you have 20? What would you get? 23. You can have any number. You do not have to match me for both of these. It just needs to be greater than 12. Do follow that rule. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense because we have several more. <laughs> okay. Create 
a table of three values right here for x and y such that fancy language each y is three times as much as its corresponding x coordinate now look at what happens if i put three times x remember on previous videos i said hmm this is a good time to switch over to the dot form of multiplication because this looks confusing yes it does so try to avoid using the x for multiplication when writing your formula. So we're going to do 3 times x, or x times 3 equals y. And you can do y equals 3 times x, 3 times x equals y, x times 3 equals y. Remember the commutative property means I can move my factors around, and I will get the same answer. Okay? So again, you are not given any x values because you choose what you would like. Now keep in mind, if you're multiplying by 3, we could get a pretty large product pretty quickly. So if I started with 12 here, then I would have 12 times 3 is 36, and I would have 36 for y, and is that on my graph? No. So I'm going to start really with small numbers. Let's do 2. Okay. Now, you fill in, it's going to be 2 for x, 2 times 3 equals y. So what's y? 6. Okay, you, you don't put the other factor in the y position. That's not what you're putting in. You're putting in the answer to the problem. So you have 2 times this number, 3 times, okay, to get the y. And then if you are ready, you just go ahead and write your ordered pair in the proper format. Next one, I do not want to go any higher than 12, so I'm going to keep it small. Okay, 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, this is where the answer goes after you've done your multiplication in all these boxes. So 3 and 9, that's your ordered pair. Now again, keep the, keeping your x value small, if I have 4 times 3, what will I get? Well, I will max out my chart here. You could have had 1. You could have, um, you can have odd numbers, of course. I'm just choosing these even numbers because they seem pretty easy. You can also have fractional numbers, but that would make it harder on this one because we just have whole numbers for all of our lines, okay? But there are all the fractional numbers to infinity that are in between all the whole numbers. Don't forget that. So 4 and 12. Plot each point on the coordinate plane. So let's see how these look. 2 and 6. 2, 6. 3, 9. 3, 9. 4, 12. 4, 12. Now this is what I call a steep line. This is a steep line. How interesting. So on when compared with the last line where we added uh, 3, okay, that was a little bit flatter. Okay? This one is a multiply by 3, and look, it's quite steep. So we did that. Use a straight edge to connect. We already did it. And give the coordinates of two other points that fall on this line. That means follow the rule. With y coordinates greater than 25. Okay, so you want your answer, whatever you multiply, to be greater than 25. I and mean, we could start at 25 with x, and it would certainly be greater. But you don't have to go that high if you don't want to. But I can't use 5 because 5 times 3 would only give me 15, so that's too small. Okay, that won't work. So go higher than 5 so that when you multiply by 3. 6, nope. 7, 8, nope, 9. Okay, so you can use 9 because 9 times 3 is 27. That's about the lowest you can go for the whole numbers. Let's go a little bit higher. Let's do like a 12. Okay, what's 12 times 3? That's right, 36. So if you have just a straight multiplication, then choose whatever you want for your value there for x, any number 
that is greater than 25, any number greater than 25, uh, for that. Okay, so I have any number that will get my final product to have a y value greater than 25. So just do that, and that is number two, and it's all done. Let's do another one. This time we have a table of five values for x and y such that each y coordinate, here we get, we're starting to get fancy. Each y coordinate, okay, is one more than three times as much as its corresponding x. Corresponding just means it's on the same, that's the x we're working with. So we're going to take the x, okay, and we're going to multiply it three times. x times three. And that's what we're going to do first. And then we're going to add one to it. Okay, so that's what your formula looks like. When you do that, you will end up with your y value. Okay, x times 3 plus 1. That'll give you your y. So start making up some numbers for your x's. And let's see what we get. Start small. That's my recommendation. So let's start with 2. Okay, now if I have 2... You substitute it in for the x, so 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1, that makes 7. Remember, you're trying to get the answer to be y. So 2 times 3 plus 1, that's your ordered pair, 2, 7. Let's do another one. Let's do 4, okay? 4 times 3, 12, plus 1, 13, 4 and 13. Okay, let's do another one. 5. Don't want to go too high. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. What if I have 6? Am I still on the graph? 6 times 3 is 18, plus 1 is 19. Okay, and for all of these y values, okay, I am right here below, but since I'm counting one, two, three, four, I'm counting by ones, I could get up to 21. You can go to a one, or you can go higher. It doesn't really matter. You could be slightly off, but we'll, we'll stick with a one. One times three is three, plus one is four. They don't have to be in numerical order, but it, it's fine. It's fine if they are, it's fine if they are not. Plot each point on the coordinate plane. Let's see what happens with a rule like this. Okay, 2, 7. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Got to know what you're counting by before you can plot any points. 2, 7, 5, 6, 7. 4, 13. 4 and 1 past the 12. Pretty steep line there. 5, 16. Here's 5, whoop, all the way up here, 16. 6 and 19. Here's 6 all the way up to right below the 20. And then, of course, we have our 1, 4. Lots of points on the line. You really only need 2 points to make a good line, 3 points to be absolutely sure that you don't have any blenders or boo-boos for your line. Okay, draw, connect with a straight edge. Got it all done. Please be precise. It really does matter. Give the coordinates of two other points that would fall on this line whose x coordinates are greater than 12. This time we need the x coordinate to be greater than 12. Okay, then you apply the formula. The, uh, the formula is going to be x times 3 plus 1, okay, then you will get your y value, and we need x to be greater than 12, so let's do 15, okay, so you would take 15 times 3, that makes 45 plus 1, that makes 46 equals y, so this is, this is how you're doing it when you have a more involved formula. So this is basically what I'm thinking in my head as I'm creating my y, okay? Let's do like 20. 
Okay, so it's got to be greater than 12. 20 is greater. 20 times 3 is 60 plus 1 is 61. So those are two other points that would be on this line. Like we have created a rule, so these points will be on this line. They'll just be like way out here, way out here off the page. Okay, hopefully this is real helpful. Click subscribe and come back again, but wait, there's more. Number four, use the coordinate plane to complete the following tasks. Ooh, we have three lines on this graph. Line L, line M, line N. Okay, so follow the rule. X is equal to Y. You get to make up your points, but remember, X and Y will be equal here. So you can come up with any points that you would like. For X, we can look at what we're counting by and look at how much we have on our coordinate plane. We have up to 15. So as long as they're equal, I could do like 3, 3, 5, 5, 10, 10. Okay, those would all work. Write the pairs in proper format. And then plot the points. We're going to, we have to have the lines so that we can see if something intersects. So go ahead and plot your points. These are counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are all whole numbers all the way to forever and infinity and beyond. And then plot them 3, 3, 5, 5, 10, 10. Make a line. And, hmm, very interesting. That goes right through the origin. So noticing that when the points are equal, when x is equal to y, you have a line that is splitting your coordinate plane exactly in half. Okay? Now, this is for line L. I'm going to go ahead and label that line L, fancy cursive. For line M, Y is one more than X. The word more than, words more than, it means I've got a little addition going on. So I have X plus one equals Y. And be sure and, and be careful when you make your X and your plus so that it doesn't look like a times or multiplication because I've seen a lot of mistakes happen there and then people start multiplying. So whatever your X, oh, and I forgot to put our letters to name our points, A, B, C. Now we're making GHI. Whatever you want X to be here, um, let's do three, okay? Three for X plus one is Y, four, three, and four. It's just really very simple. It's almost like um, first grade math. Make up a number for x that's on this graph. Let's try 9. 9 plus 1, 10. 9 and 10. Let's do a bigger one. Let's do 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. 12 and 13. The rule is add 1 to x. So plot the, these points and let's label them. 3, 4. 3, 4. 9, 10. Here's 9. Here's 10. What do you notice? 12, 13. 11, 12, 13. See, look, if you look away, you get kind of off track. So that's why it help, it's helpful if you have two hands, and then you can kind of follow, label if you need to as high as you need to, as often as you need to. Okay, uh, label your points with their letters. This is G, H, and I, and connect them with a straight edge. And what do we have here? We have created parallel lines, okay? Um, but we'll get to that. Okay, this is line M, M. And then what are we gonna? What's gonna happen with line N? Let's check it out. Y is one more than twice X. Twice X would look like that. Okay, twice X is two times X, 
or x times 2. And then we have to add one more in order to get y. Okay, and remember, always have the x and the y in your equation. Okay, just like this one, y, x is equal to y, x plus 1 equals y, x times 2 plus 1 equals y. Let's start making up some numbers. I always like to start with something like a 3, okay, and then apply the formula. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So your first ordered pair can be anything that you choose. You do not have to be using my x values. It can be anything. But eventually, we might have some that match. Let's do 5. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 1 is 11. 5 and 11. Let's do 7. And 7 times 2 is 14 plus 1 is 15. And plot these points S T U. So three seven, five six seven, five eleven, five ten eleven, seven and fifteen. Up, 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 up. Fifteen. And this is S T U. Okay. Let's put the dots together. Actually, I'm going to use the right word. It's points. Connect the points with your... Oh, we're going to ignore that. Okay, so which two lines intersect? And we need to put line N here. And it would be lines M and N. Lines M and N. Give the coordinates of their intersection, where they cross. That is right here. Okay. Now, what happens in this spot? That means there is no x value. It is at 0. x is 0. And what's y? Right there, 1. Okay. So they intersect at 0, 1. And which two lines are parallel? We talked about that in the very beginning. We have m and L. And finally, the last one, I'm going to scooch this up. Give the rule for another line that would be parallel to the lines you listed in problem 4C. So if you look back at the rule, okay, for M and L, and we have Y, X is equal to Y, then Y is one more than X. So if, these, if this makes it parallel, x equals y, and then the other one is y is 1 more than x, y, y is 1 more than x, what would be a rule that would be similar? Okay, we want another parallel line. So we could have y is fill in the blank 2 more than x y is 3 more than x so that's kind of how you do that you look at the patterns that you have established in previous lines and then you kind of go from there okay i hope this has been helpful that's a long lesson and a lot of work but be precise and you will get this so we'll see you on the next video